Namo das bhagavato arahato samma sambud das namo das bhagavato arahato samma sambud das namo das bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambur Dasa Sadhu San. Good morning, members of the Mahasanghas and um, uh, brothers and sisters in the Dhammas, eh? BGF. <clears throat> yeah, this is a man of Katina, right? As you can see that the monks are quite busy this month traveling around to receive robes and requisites. <laughs> They're very busy. <clears throat> yeah, and of course, yeah, when we talk about it's Katina, right? Because this is a month of Katina, yeah? That's just how uh, Brother Chisang has said, right? If this is a place where no monks observe, then we can only do the Sankikadana or Sankadana. Yeah, so yeah, whatever Katina or the Sankadana, I think is the events of the lay people, right? So this is your festival, right? Yeah, it's your festival. So I consider this festival as a very important festival because uh, there's something to do with the Vasa, right? So we know that the monk observe the three months Vasa, right? And, and after the Vasa, right, there will be a month of Katina, right? So the Katina means a kind of ropes uh, made by the Sankha, okay? That means a very solid, right? So of course that carry a lot of meanings like, you know, it has the, the significant, it has this, what you call, the strong, solid merit, that kind of meaning. So when you talk about the Katina here, I would like to share uh, five significance, okay? I summarize it. Huh? I, I believe most of you know what is meant by the Vasa, right? Because this is a Buddhist term, Vasa, right? And then the Katina also, right? So I will probably share with you uh, five significance related to the events of Katina, okay? And the first one is the end of the Vasa period, right? The Vasa period, so Trima Vasa period. So this is a period where Mang observe their, uh, what do they call, <clears throat> uh, their Vasa, Right during these three months, okay. So during these three months, Sankha has to uh, engage or focus on their meditation, on their studies, or on their research, or whatever it is. Okay. So that is to say, the monks they don't go out during these three months, huh? and during these three months, monks are quite serious, engage in their study. So this is something to do with more of their self practice. Okay. So during these three months, uh, monks don't go out. Right? So then after the, after the end of the three months wasa period, um, then we said monks' uh, uh, seniority is increased by one wasa. Uh, okay. <laughs> so you can see that when we, ask, uh, when we talk about how many wasa you have, it doesn't count by how old are you, right? It counted by how many wasa that you have observed. Okay, if you don't observe that years, okay, three months wasa, it means that that years wasa is not counted, right? So, so that's why you know that cause the man has to observe the wasa, right? If not, then the whole year is wasted, right? <laughs> so, yeah, when we talk about this, uh, uh, the wasa, right? And the Buddha also said uh, after the wasa, monks are ready to go out to start preach again, right? So um, you can see that uh, you know during these uh, months uh, katina right we are 
uh, preparing robes, uh, preparing the requisites for the sankhas, you know, get them ready, right, for another eight months preaching. Yeah? They need to, uh, you know, to have, uh, you know, the requisites, you know, to have the robes ready for another journey, uh, for another journey. Uh. So you are preparing robes and other requisites uh, um, for the monks to engage with their uh, next uh, propagation. Right? So this is what we said, the significance of the Vasapi, or of this Katina. And the second one is the offering ceremony, like now we are doing offering ceremony, right? And this offering ceremony, you know, you know that, uh, you know, during these ceremonies, you are offering robes. Uh, other than robes, you also offer the requisites of, uh, what else? As other allowable requisites to the Sangha. And yeah, we can see that, that this month is a merit making month. Huh? Uh, in Pali, we call punya, right? So you are, you are accumulating merit, you are doing merit. So the Katina or Sankadana consider as the merit making activities. Okay, so this is also to recognize the Sankha's commitment to their three months of spiritual practice. Okay, so the Sankha, we are talking about the Sankha, like just now Brother Chi Seng has said, the Sankha here, are referred to the past, right, present, and the future Sankha. It's a community of the Sankhas, right? And these Sankhas are coming from four directions, right? Imagine that when, why offering to the Sankha is considered as the mandatory as it is, is because, uh, uh, you know, the Sankha, the past, present, and future, many of these Sankhas may have already attained Arahat, right? Considering the offering to the Arahat, right, can accumulate a tremendous amount of merit for yourself yeah so and of course we also you know buddhist practice we believe that uh, through the practice of generosity the practice of offering right we will gain to a higher rebirth right uh, because we talk about life after death right so we we have to accumulate merit for ourselves right so we have to keep all these merits in the putting our back Right? So that when we pass, when we when we say sayonara, <laughs> then uh, our punya bank has enough requisites, okay, to guarantee our uh, rebirth in the higher plans of existence, okay. So true. So this offering has to do it. Yeah, um, you have to do it. You know, siki siki jadi boki, right? Uh, not to wait until the last day. Uh, last day is too late already. La, uh. So you do it slowly, slowly. Every year you come and engage yourself in these events of Katina or in the events of offering, right? Help yourself right? to put a little bit right in the punya bag. Uh. So siki siki jadi bukit. Uh. So that very much helps you right in our assurance of higher rebirth, right? In our next uh, next birth. Then the third one is a very important uh, if. Uh, significant that is the sankha lady uh, participation okay it's not your event it's not our sankha event it's our event right it's a combination of the lady as well as for the sangha right so this festival we encouraged the participation from the lay community to support the sankha dana's event right so this why we have uh, the main sponsors la, or common sponsors la, uh, right so all these things we encourage them to to do the merit right and of course just um we we all know that this katina event or the sankadana's event right is to this event is to promote the unity harmonious and the peaceful uh relationship between the monastics and the laity and of course, uh, you, you find that, uh, uh, you know, this event is also an expression of uh, the act of uh, the compassion, right? Uh, that the monastic shown to the lay people, right? And of course, for one thing that the lay people, uh, uh, you know, encourage the lay people to accumulate merit for their better report. And we here, I would like to quote, uh, uh, from the Sigalawada Suttas about the set of guidelines, right, uh, for the lay people, right, of how to interact with the Sangha because this is the events of the laity and the Sangha event. So, so um, you know, in this event, we expect the cooperation, the communication, right, between the monastery and the Sanghas, right? And of course, 
Uh, through this event, also, in this sutta, also the Buddha showed the reciprocal relationship uh, between the monastics and the laity. So, and just now we talk about, you know, this kind of coexistence between the monastic and the Sangha is to ensure a very harmonious and a peaceful relationship. So, in the Sigalovada Sutta, right, the Buddha uh, showed uh, several uh, responsibilities, a set of guidelines or responsibilities, or we call it ethical conduct for both the laity and the monastic community. And these are the responsibility, okay? So that is to say, when lay people associate with Sankhya, so what are the things that we have to adhere, right? To follow, to abide, right? And there are these five things. I think these are very relevant, right? Especially in our community, Buddhist community that consists of the monastic as well as the laity. So the Buddha says, right? When lay people associate with the Sankhya, these are the five things that we should know, okay? Uh, listen carefully, okay? Uh, and the first one, the Buddha said, we have to be kind in our bodily action. Okay? Um, kind, huh? Ho sim tam po la, huh? Then when you see the monks, us, wow, you know, bo tua bo se, huh? You see? So it's bodily, um, you know, be kind in the bodily action. Okay? And of course, the second one, be kind in their speech, right? And be kind in their thought, okay? So these are the three, huh? bodily action, uh, bo uh, the speech, and the thought. Be kind, huh? be kind. <laughs> um, so when you see the monks, uh, you know, smile, huh? uh, 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 so be smart, huh? be gentle, uh, the way we associate. You see the Buddhist country like in Thailand, you see the lay people when they associate with the monk, you know, they are very gentle. Yeah, very gentle and very humble and very respectful uh, when they talk to the Sanghas. And of course, the fourth one the Buddha also said, right? Be keeping your house open for the Sangha. Uh, so yeah, you can encourage you can invite the monks into your house for dana also. Right? So make sure your house is open. When you then another one, the Buddha also said by supplying. Uh, you know, their bodily needs like offering of robes, uh, requisites, etc., etc., right? And of course, this kind of support has to be done very sincerely. Um, you know, um, you know, this is to recognize the Sangha's commitment to their spiritual practice, okay? So these are the five um, ethical conducts or the set of what they call the responsibility when associated with the Sangha, okay? So in return also, the Sangha, uh, has to uh, do these five things as well. Okay, so I think it's also very interesting because you can see that uh, sankhas are not what you thought, uh, practice individually, you know, keep distancing from the lay people, not associating with the people, don't talk to the lay people, no. You can see very clearly, uh, you know, lay people has to be, you know, sankha has to be compassion enough to the lay people. So be a monk is not easy. Right? Uh, not only you have to study well, knowledgeable, practice well, and also you have to good in PR as well. Right? If monks are not good <laughs> in all these things, uh, can easily be scolded by the lay people. Right? So be a monk is not easy. So sometimes you have to be, uh, uh, mm -hmm. okay, so PR, you know the PR. <laughs> you know, you have to know how to talk to the lay people. Right? Don't scold the people. Right? Don't scold them. Right? But of course, you score them gently. Lah, huh? uh, um, but anyway, uh, you, you look at the spirits of the association, right? It's about the act of compassion here. Okay? So the Buddha says, uh, you know, the, the Sangha has to restrain the lay people, you know, from doing the evil thing. Okay? Uh, then, of course, you encourage them uh, to do good things. Right? So I think it's quite clear, no? Uh, the Buddha's teaching is Sabha Papa Sakaranang, Kusalasa Pasampada, right? Sabha Papa Sakaranang, not doing bad, right? To do good, right? So it's our monk's duties to, to give you the Panchasila, to teach you, you know, to encourage you to do good, not to do the evil things, right? And then the third one, the Buddha also said, monk has to be compassionate, right? To the lay people, right? 
<coughs> to be compassionate. Okay, so when we talk about the compassionate, I will quote you another sutta, right? Uh, that one will come afterwards, okay, after this. Uh -huh. The third one is to be compassionate. And the fourth one is to teach the lay people, right? The teachings that they have not heard of before. It's not easy, you know. It means that the monk has to study hard, no? If not, then the monk will say the same thing again and again and again, huh? Uh, you see, but anyway, I think that is also a very great challenge for us, right? To explore more the teachings of the Buddha so that when we come here, we, we think of giving you something new that you have not heard of before, right? Uh, okay, so this is also our, our, our duties, right? Then another one, the Buddha also said, right? To point you to the, to the heaven, to show you the path to the heaven. Okay, ma. Yeah, this is what we all expected to, isn't it? Uh, we want to go to the heaven after this, overall, right? So the Buddha says we have to point, to point out, right, to the lay people the path to the heaven, right? So you can see that you know this uh, Sikalawada Suttas uh, provides uh, uh, what they call a mutual obligation. Each group has towards has to do right towards one another, right? So in short, right, the lay people provides the material support. And the Sangha provides their spiritual guidance and teaches them the way to heaven and liberation. Okay, so it's a very good combination between the monastery and the Sangha. Right? So then, of course, when you talk about the third one, to be a compassionate, right? I find that in another sutta, right? Uh, this sutta is from the Anguttara Nikaya. Uh, the Buddha also said monks should possess uh, these five qualities, right? These qu five qualities. Uh, that are considered to be compassionate, right? Attitudes shown to the lay people. Okay, so you see, um, monks not easy, huh? And of course, you look at these two sets, uh, these two suttas. There, they, they, there are more or less the same obligation, right? Of this fine, uh, the Buddha said, lay people. Sh I mean, the sangha has to encourage lay people to do good, not to do the evil. Okay, in this case, it's one, right? But Sigalovada Sutta is. In the Sugalawada Sutta is two. Okay, two, two, two responsible, two responsibility. And the third one, the Buddha, the second one, right? The Buddha also said we have to teach the lay, right, the proper understanding of the Dharma. This is something similar to the Sigalawada Sutta, taught them what they have not heard of before. Okay. And then the third one, um, <laughs> something is also very interesting. It says that when someone falls sick, right? When the lay people fall sick, the monk has to go to them, approach them, right? Um, and then saying, let the honorable one establish mindfulness. Okay? So it means that if there is any invitation, right, from the lay people, if there are any, any of their friends or relatives, uh, you know, admitted to hospital, it's also our Sangha's duties to go, uh, to give them blessing, to, to, to give them a few words, right, to, to, to encourage them to have mindfulness okay um establish the mindfulness okay so these are the teachings uh, so you can see that so uh, you know let people invite the sangha to the hospitals right to give blessing uh to their to their sick relative it's also a compassionate action right from the side of the sangha and of course the fourth one is also interesting it says right when there is this uh, sangha assembly Right, like this kind of assembly or any house dancers or, or right, okay. When there is like like, like the big group or the what they call the gathering of the bhikkhu uh, or the bhikkhunis, right, uh, coming to one place, right. So um, the lay people should uh, no, not lay people. It's a sangha. <laughs> we sangha has to, has to approach the lay people and inf in, inform the lay people that uh, ask the lay people to do marriage. Okay, to come to do merit. Okay, it is an occasion to do merit. So we should not to be shy, right? Uh, because this is a very opportunity, right? To encourage the lay people to come, yeah, to do dhanas, to accumulate merit for themselves. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so this is also act of compassion, right? So now today we had the posters, you know, spreading around, sharing around, right? It's also act of compassion. Let more people know these events and let them do the merit for themselves okay so um, this is the fourth one and of course 
the fifth one might not to be so choosy, right? In a sense, wherever the food offered by the lay people, we accept it, okay? We accept it uh, out of faith by the devotees, okay? Uh, you understand? So these are the five, uh, the act of compassion, right? Shown uh, by the Sangha to the lay people, okay? So this is a, this one. Uh, and of course, uh, when you talk, yeah, since this is the events of the Sankhas and the Leti event, right? The Katina or the Sankha Dana. So, uh, you know, through these events, okay, we can create a very peaceful and harmonious community, right, among our community and make this Katina or the Sankha Dana, right, a significant event for our long lasting of the Buddha Sasana. And ultimately, you know, through the act of generosity, right, act of offering, right, be a condition for our realization of the attainment uh, to Nibbana. Okay? So, and just now, Brother Chisya also said, you know, this Katina is a very ancient old event. Uh, it's an un, un, unbroken, you know, tradition, you know, carry on, you know, from Buddhist times, you know, until now. Imagine that. You know, if we don't do the Katina, if there is no Sangha, what will happen to the Buddha Sasana? Right? So the Buddha Sasana will, will definitely be lost. Right? So, so when we do this Katina or Sangha Dana, we uphold, you know, this very ancient old tradition, and, you know, upkeep this tradition for the long lasting of the Buddha Sasana. Okay, and of course, uh, for the benefits of oneself and for others as well, right? So it's our duties, you know, to protect the Buddha Sasana. Uh, so we, we know each other's set of responsibility. Uh, so all these things ensure that the Sasanas can grow in the community, right? For the benefits of all. Okay, so this is the third significant uh, of the Katina. And the fourth one, is the cultural activities, cultural activities. Uh, you can see that as these Sankadanas or the Kadinas is, 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 is growing, you see, uh, especially in different countries, uh, in different tradition, <clears throat> right? This kind of Kadinas is not just only mere offering, but it also include various other kinds of the cultural events like the procession. You know, the procession, right? You can see that like in Myanmar, in Thailand, right? They dress in very colorful clothing, you know, they dance, they sing, you see, along the procession. It means that they are so much rejoice, right? In the events of the Katina, right? Yeah, just now when we talk about the Katina, it's, it's, a, it's, the, it's a very joyful event, right? Buddha was very happy after seeing, you know, the monk practice for three months, and most of them have achieved to the higher attainment. So monk, so the Buddha was very happy. Uh, then the lay people, you know, knew that, right? They also want to partake in the event. Uh, so this event, we also can, can call it a very joyful event. So you find that some of these cultural events also incorporated in the Katina celebration, right? So yeah, when we talk about this, uh, like in Sri Lanka, you have this traditional gong, right? <laughs> or the traditional dancers, you know, dress in a very traditional way and then also they have the chanting right the whole night chanting and then you know a lot of uh, you know religious assembly congregation you know all center or happen during that one month period okay and so yeah this katina is a very joyful event again right uh, so uh, you know through this celebration through the offering uh, through all this event all right is to strengthen uh, the communal ties uh, uh, and reinforce the teachings of the buddhas okay so this is the fourth significant and another one is the the last one is also very important one that is the spiritual reflection okay overall organizing all these things we have to look within now okay this is very important so we have to reflect uh, spiritually, right? You see, um, the katina, right, is the uh, and emphasize the importance of the giving, the generosity, right? And of course, just now we talk about the compassion, right? It's act of compassion, 
right? So you see, through the act of uh, generosity, right, even the morality or even the compassion, right? So this can bring forth our inner qualities. Huh? Uh, when we talk about inner quality, we have all these qualities, but because of the dust of greed, hatred, and delusion, right, that cover our 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 inner quality, right? So through the practice of this giving, right, through the practice of the act of compassion, right, we have bring forth this inner beauty quality, which we are shining forth this inner quality. Okay, so so these are what we told about. You know, this 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 Katina celebration, you know, has these several significance. Okay, so now now it's already ten o'clock, right? So I'm I'm. Uh, Mahasamaya Sutras, right? It's not 15 minute chanting. It's about the fastest one, probably is 35 minutes. Okay. But before that, uh, the Mahasama, Mahasamaya Sutras, I think I need to give you the background of this Mahaya, Mahasamaya Sutras and the significance of it. Okay. Before we chant, huh? Because today, since today is a very joyful event, right? So we also have to, this Mahasamaya Sutras. Samaya Sutta is very relevant. Okay, so yeah, I also need to highlight several uh, reasons why we want to chant the Mahasamaya. The first one is, yeah, Mahasamaya means that great assembly, right? So when we talk about the great assembly, um, you know, you are referring to this assembly of uh, different deities, okay, or different devas, okay, the, from different realms of existence huh, in the heaven. Right? They all come together right, to pay homage to the Buddhas. Right? So this emphasizes the teachings of the communal gathering, right? monastic and the lake community, the gathering right? in the teachings and practice of Buddhism. Okay? So this is one thing. Right? So you imagine that these suttas will invite a lot of devas coming. Right? Yeah, so, uh, you know, to partake. You know, to participate in this gathering. Huh? So this is one thing. And then another thing is also is the representation of different realms. Huh? You find that uh, beings, including the devas, you know, coming from different realms of the of the you know the, the heaven, right? Yeah, and so this is the idea of the Buddhist cosmology. Yeah, Buddhist cosmology. Yeah, when we talk about the beings, not just only from our human being, we also have many invisible beings. You know, coming from different realms of existence, like those of the deva realms. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, so this is uh, the second meaning. Okay, to recognize. Huh? Then the third one is also another thing: is the teaching of the generosity and virtue. You see, yeah, this today is an event. Of offering, right? We emphasize the the generosity, right? So we are inviting, you know, these devas to rejoice, you know, in the act of the giving. Okay, uh, so that it it can bring us uh, benefits, uh, it can bring us more blessing, right? And of course, more important is this, right? When these heavens are happy with us, okay, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like when I was young time, you see, my mother said, hey, choy, choy ma, you have to do well, uh, you see. Then I said, why? They said the God uh, from the heaven will come down and check, you know, whether you observe well during these periods or not. Okay? <laughs> then, if you are not observing well, uh, they will go out and report to the, to the higher devils that you are not doing well, right? Wow, at that time, I'm so, so much kanchiong and so much worried. You see, so you see, so this is also I think quite a similar idea is that you see, so we are inviting the devils, you know, coming down, you know, to, to rejoice, to partake in this act of generosity. When they are happy with our offering, right, they will go up and report to the our Timsa heaven, right, the, the Tao Timsa heaven. That uh, you know, there are so many good people in BGF, right, doing this. Uh, Sankadana's event. Okay, so you have to make sure that when these people pass away, you know, guarantee their rebirth in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, yeah, this is the meaning. Like, another one is a devotional practice, like devotional practice. Okay, yeah, because uh, these suttas uh, serve as a devotional function, right? It highlighting the respect and venerating 
uh, that the monk, uh, that the human beings, okay, and the deities uh, hold for the Buddhas. Okay, you can see that our Buddhas is is a great, it's a is it's enlightened being. You see, even the devas also come down and pay respect to the Buddhas. Okay, so. Yeah, I think through this sutta is reinforcing our the importance of cultivating the respect and the devotion uh, in our spiritual journey.